we manufacture a few doses of a given medicine, but we typically can only do about three to five before it gets too expensive. So then we resort to things like splitting, where we're actually cutting pills and patches and tablets in half to try to find an optimal dose. But of course, none of these really work well. And Hi, everybody. My name is Dalton Signor, and I am the co-founder and CEO here at Miss Therapeutics. Now, one of our founding beliefs here at Mist is that today we have amazing medicine, but we're actually really bad at using it. And I say that because we're very limited in our ability to tailor medicine to treat specific patients and their conditions. And so some of the ways that we try to do this today are we manufacture a few doses of a given medicine, but we typically can only do about three to five before it gets too expensive. So then we resort to things like splitting, where we're actually cutting pills and patches and tablets in half to try to find an optimal dose. But of course, none of these really work well. And so we're stuck with this problem where we have great medicine, but we can't use it optimally to treat patients in conditions. And so this is what we're solving here at MIST, and we're doing it with this inhaler that we've invented. So this is a platform inhaler, meaning that it works with a wide range of different compounds and medicines. And the way that it works is we have a proprietary fluidic system in the device that communicates with embedded software to control the dose of medicine that comes out. So we can actually put one dose of medicine into this device and then execute our code to output 100 different doses. It's incredibly cost effective because all it costs to change the dose is just executing a new line of code. And this lets us not only personalize the dose very specifically to a patient, but also to easily adjust it over time as the condition or the patient need changes. And so really what we have here is a tool to take today's amazing medicines and make them far more useful and effective for patients. This is not some pipe dream that we have. We have already developed this technology. We've tested it in our lab. It works great. Uh, we have a fantastic partnership with Yale University on this, and we've already initiated discussions with the FDA for our first product, where we're using this technology as a treatment for smoking addiction. Now, we're starting with smoking because it is the number one cause of preventable death and disease in the world, and today's treatments have an average failure rate of over 90%. So this is an area where we desperately need a new treatment for patients, and our technology is a perfect fit here. So here's a quick overview of how it actually works. Our inhaler is filled with a water-based formulation of pharma-grade nicotine, and the device delivers that to the peripheral lung where it's absorbed very rapidly to provide craving relief in under 60 seconds. And where our dosing comes into play here is that the device is programmed so that on day one of treatment, one dose delivers the same amount of nicotine that you would get from a cigarette. And then automatically over three months, the device reduces the delivered dose by 1.1% all the way down to zero to gradually wean the user off their addiction without invoking cravings and withdrawals. And so this is just one great example of how we're taking an existing chemistry medicine and we're using our device as a tool to make it more useful and effective as a treatment for patients. Now, we're also starting with smoking because it's one of the best market opportunities. We have tens of millions of people in the US that try to quit smoking every year, and they're spending billions of dollars on medicines to help them every year. So we don't have to change consumer behavior here. We're just tapping into an existing market and offering a far better product. Now, this is the team that we have behind us. Uh, between us, we have worked at many different VC-backed startups, mostly in the medtech or pharma space. And this team has the skill set to take us forward for the next 18, 24 months to hit all our big milestones. And so where we're at today is that we're raising an $850,000 round. We have about 70% of that closed and the round is being led by 1517 fund. And we're using the money for three main things. First and foremost, this January, we have a phase one clinical study for our smoking cessation inhaler. And then we'll be taking that data and actually submitting to the FDA to advance to the next clinical stage. So part of the funds will also be used for those regulatory meetings. And then lastly, after we finish our study in January, we will be adding one new indication to the pipeline. So starting testing on what's going to be our second product. 
So if you're interested in the work that we're doing and you want to have the conversation, please reach out and I would be happy to talk. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, you know, you talked about how the device reduces the dose by 1.1% per day for three months to wean the patient off. I mean, what's the magic? Is there magic behind that number and data and research that that's the right way to do it? Um, how did you arrive at, at that pattern? Yeah, so uh, it goes a little bit into the neurobiology here, but basically the way that not only nicotine addiction, but all receptor mediated addictions work for the most part is you have X number of the relevant receptors in the brain, and then Y amount of nicotine, let's say. And as long as those are equivalent, everything's okay. But once you take away the drug or you reduce it too much at one time, you create what we call receptor availability. And that availability has been clinically shown to lead to the cravings and withdrawals. So what we've done with this is there's just never really been a precision dosing technology out there to do it, but we can decrease the dose sufficiently slowly in line with the natural downregulation of the brain's receptors so that you never create that availability all during the entire time of the treatment. And so you never have those cravings and those withdrawals emerge. Um, we have a question from the audience for you, Dalton. Um, does a consumer need one device for each medication? How does the user differentiate? Are there labels on each? Yeah, so we have built it out so that the device can be a platform. So I can, if you guys can see this, I can show you here how the device works. So yeah, this is the device here and it has these two parts. So this is the durable unit and it is it has all the expensive parts that you wouldn't wanna be reusing. And so patients can use this for many different treatments. And then we just have these disposable drug cartridges and they snap together very simply. And so it's a really nice platform where we don't have to do any new engineering for new products. We just load a different drug into here, give it a different label as the question asked. And then you just have a nice platform which built around this one core technology that has everything in it. Um, and then, you know, I'm curious, after smoking cessation, what do you view as the next big markets for you or the next logical places to expand? Yeah, so there's a lot of places we can go with this. Um, we can really do any medicine that you can formulate as an aqueous solution or nano mold or nano suspension. One of the markets that we're looking at next is pain. Um, we have the ability here to deal, especially in in chronic pain markets like breakthrough cancer pain, where we can you you know you literally have patients and doctors working every day, every week together to find okay what's a dose that's going to work for this patient. So we can completely streamline that process. We have all the electronic controls so we can deliver the medicine to help these patients when they have these breakthrough um, cancer pain episodes, easily personalizable. We can put electronic limits so that you can't take any dose other than what's prescribed. So it eliminates the entire issue with pills or solutions, any of that stuff. So that's a really great market that we're exploring as a potential second product.